or let's say even simpler if every month you do a certain number of tests and then you make this amount of money to the lab then from the interests maybe you should be getting 10 percent 20 percent yeah yeah and it would also make people want to work more i always wondered what medical laboratory scientists are paid around the world so about three weeks ago we decided to create a google form that we sent on various different platforms reddit linkedin Facebook, in order to get input from various laboratory scientists around the world, so that we know what they get paid in their various countries. We received a total of 161 responses. And today we're going to go through those responses and explain some of what we have found. So let's talk MedLab. So I'm here today with Wisdom, and we're going to go over some of the results that we obtained. So like I was saying earlier, we received results from various countries around the world. 17 countries in total. There were 161 responses. We had to remove some of them because we wanted yearly salaries, but some gave the responses for their hourly salaries. We didn't want to miscalculate anything, and so we had to remove some of them, but not that many. A lot of responses came from the United States. We had 68% of people actually coming from the United States. I guess it's not that surprising. I mean, people in the US are usually a bit more responsive. Yes, the platform as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially places like Reddit. Reddit, yeah. Lots of Reddit. people from the US. Facebook, it will depend on the group. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, in general. And we also had, let's see, apart from USA, we also had lots of responses from Canada. So, 68% from USA, nine, about 9% from Canada. We had about 3.3% of people in Benin responding, although we had sent it to some. WhatsApp groups, groups yeah. where there were medical laboratory scientists. But I guess sharing information online isn't for everybody. Yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah. Especially in our countries, it probably also depends, depends on the demography of mm -hmm. people who are True. usually online. And also one thing to note is that in this list, there are some countries that were removed, like I was saying earlier, but at the same time, there are also countries where people replied and there was only one reply. So the results we have right now aren't necessarily representative of every country you see. That's why we're going to ask you, if you know anyone who's a medical laboratory scientist, to please forward the link in the description to them so that they can also fill the form and we can use that to get even better results. Now let's see a bit what the median salary is by actual currency in the various countries. If, for example, you're in the US, you don't necessarily know what a million naira is equivalent to. But if you're interested in knowing what people get paid in your country, what the median salary in your country is, you can look at this particular page. What we're going to be focusing on is the equivalent, the yearly equivalent in US dollars to be able to compare. So we had responses coming from American Samoa, through Namibia to Nigeria, South Africa, and a couple other countries. Now, as you can see here, the highest median salary obtained was in the US, which is not surprising, $61,750. That's actually similar to what I've seen online, a little bit higher, but I've seen I've seen numbers around the fifty-six thousand dollar range. Sixty-one seven fifty looks close enough. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, I think sometimes you you won't see the range between fifty-six thousand until about around seventy thousand right. dollars. Yeah. So yeah, especially from one website to the other, it may vary a bit depending on the database of people. Yeah they have now the lowest on the list is cameroon with a thousand five hundred and fourteen dollars per year yeah, yeah now one thing to note about that particular figure is there was only one person from cameroon that responded so that may simply be the reason why it's that low but we can see that there's actually quite a discrepancy i'm not a discrepancy but there's quite a difference between what's being made in the US and what's being made in other countries. countries yeah. So the second lowest on the list would be what well, looks like it's been Nigeria. In, oh, Nigeria, actually. Yeah, 2,685 Naira. Oh, 2,685 yeah, dollars. 2,685 dollars is, it's not that bad, but it could be better. Yeah, true, mm. true. And, and, and I guess this would also depend on like uh, one thing 
we probably maybe could have added, but we don't know how much impact it would have had. Might be the cities, because if you are living in a capital city, mm -hmm. normally they should be should have a higher salary. Rate. Yeah, normally. Or, but then we couldn't do that yet. We don't have yes. a, we don't have enough people participating. We didn't expect as many people. I mean, we didn't really expect that many people to participate for us to be able to separate everything. Yeah. And even though we have what sixty eight percent from the US, that was going to be around what eighty something people, eighty ninety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that still would have been hard. There are fifty states in the United States, so <laughs> that wouldn't have worked. But like I was saying earlier, if you know people who are medical laboratory scientists, ask them to fill the form. It's going to help us get even better results. Yeah. So you can also look for your country in the list if it's there. If it's not there, fill the form. The UK, I think, is second on the list, right? No, actually, Australia. Australia. Yeah. Nine thousand five hundred and sixty US dollars. It's pretty good. Now, what can we do in our countries if we want to have better salaries, according to you? Uh, I haven't thought about this a lot, but probably maybe we could start with some kind of um, minimum wage. I don't know. Uh, maybe to work in our own countries. Well, we already have a minimum wage. It was very low. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean the minimum wage is there it's just that it's too low to be able to survive on that or um, maybe having more means of specialization say for instance in med lab science yeah in most African countries we mm -hmm. don't really produce the kits we use the reagents we use mm -hmm. maybe looking into that angle as how do we produce the reagents ourselves how do we produce the kits ourselves that could probably help the whole landscape for mid lab science. Yeah, but I think actually in our country, that may not be, I think, the big problem. I think labs do make money. It's just that people in the labs aren't necessarily paid according to the profit they make to mm -hmm. the places where they work. Personally, I think it has a bit more to do with um, national associations to try and push a bit more transparency and to try and standardize payments. So, for example, if the lab in which you work makes, I don't know, 10 million in profits, or let's say even simpler, if every month you do a certain number of tests and then you make this amount of money to the lab, then from the interests, maybe you should be getting 10%, 20%. Yeah, yeah. And it would also make people want to work more. Especially in labs where you run lots of tests and if your pay is static, you don't really have the motivation to sell. To yeah, more. more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because we have labs here, for example, where people at some point, well, they just check out essentially. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I guess that, that's why at a certain time, especially in Benin, we had many lab scientists who were basically entrepreneurs owning their own labs because yeah. they felt that that was the best way they could to make money yeah, to get more for themselves. Hmm. Then we have median salary by country. Oh, actually, no, this is in Bitcoin. So just really quickly, I wanted to see what it looked like in Bitcoin. So I guess the richest in Bitcoin would be someone from the United States of America. Where they said they have the highest, they're paid uh, the most. Then, of course, we have Australia and then Canada and also the UK, the UK yeah. are above one Bitcoin. Everyone else is below. Now, one thing that's interesting also is the others are actually very low compared to five places. We have the UK, we have the USA, Australia, Canada. And then Germany, yeah. right at 0 0.92. Yeah. And then everything else is actually pretty low. I guess because we do have a bunch of African countries. Uh, let's see. Sweden. I actually, I expected Sweden to be a bit higher. The Netherlands too. I don't really have an experience. If you're from Sweden on the, or the Netherlands, comment below. Tell us how it works in your country. We'd like to know. Male to female ratio. Now, this is something that didn't surprise me much. We had about 108 women replying and 45 males replying. In general, women tend to be a bit more in this field. And in healthcare in general, too. Yeah, true. true. There tend to be more women. 
it's it's almost evident it's almost everywhere the lab where i work at the ratio of females to males was almost like four to one oh, yeah. yeah yeah four to one so makes sense is it the same in your lab tell us I'd like to know degrees actually one thing that surprised me here was a number of people that were actually able to work with a high school diploma that's what's that's quite interesting yeah. because if i had known i could work with a high school diploma maybe i'll just have done that from the beginning <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess for this mostly it might also depend on the time frame i don't know how it works in yeah other it depends countries. on the country too yeah i don't know how it works in other countries over here Maybe it might have been possible in the past, but as the years mm. go by, you probably need some. Actually, I think here, was it? Oh, yeah. Originally here, it was possible. There were some people who learned on the job, but very quickly, now you need a bachelor's in yeah. order to be able to work. You can't work with anything less than a bachelor's. Yeah. Nigeria is the same. Nigeria, not just a bachelor's. You need a certification yeah. before you can, before you can, actually, you can actually work. Work. So, yeah, this was quite interesting. Very interesting. And, but I wish the world was still like that, where in most countries, just with your high school diploma, you could do almost yeah, anything. Yeah, it would work. Yeah. And the associates, too, was actually, it was a pretty good number. Well, only 7.8%, but still. The two-year program, you can already start working in some countries. That would be the U.S., that would be, I'm guessing, Canada. In Nigeria, you wouldn't be able to do that. There's no way they'll give you a license. Well, I think they might not give you a license for MLS. Mm. But I know in Nigeria, they have um, yeah, assistance. science, yeah, tech, assistance. and then assistance. Yeah. So I guess the assistants might be the ones with the as associate's degree. So. Yeah, but there's a problem as far as pay is concerned, because the last time we... So I'm going to link to a video here where we discussed the last time some of the what people get paid in Nigeria. And we saw that medical laboratory technicians were paid around, if I remember correctly, 33,000 Naira, mm. which we were talking with Dennis. That's almost not enough to buy, to buy a bag of rice yeah, in Nigeria. That's, that's very, very, very terrible. <laughs> yep. The bachelor has actually formed the bulk of everybody. 78% of people in the field had, I mean, have a bachelor's degree. Now, one thing I'm not sure of, the college honors program, if anyone knows what that refers to, please, in the comments so that we know. I'm guessing it's bachelor's, but I wasn't sure. So that's why we didn't separate it. Okay. Then we had... That particular one depends probably on the country. Yeah, it depends on the country. Because yeah. I know it's actually that was from the US. So if you're in the US and then you have oh, an okay. idea, please tell us. And we also had one doctor, single lonely doctor. I guess you don't have lots of doctors in the field. But Maybe. for the most part, you don't need the doctorate in order to work. You want to work at the lab. Even to teach, you don't need the doctorate in most cases in order to teach. No, except maybe you just really want to go into research or yeah. you have a dream of becoming a professor. Yeah. That's when the doctorate is really, really necessary. I get this put into perspective um, because most of the time, sometimes in our, uh, in our country, we might feel like, oh, when you finish bachelors and maybe you don't get a job you feel like okay maybe i need a master's mm -hmm. to land the same job but looking at it on a wider scale we see that you don't really need no a master's not, not necessarily a bachelor's. depends on what you want to do yeah in most cases it's either you go for at least the way i see it either you go for the bachelor's and then you stop at the bachelor's and then you work if you go through to the master's, it's best continue and then get your PhD. At least that's the way I see it for the most part. Then next, now this is where we had an issue. Um, it's this graph um, has on the y-axis median of yearly USD equivalent and on the x-axis the years of experience. Originally, this graph was made for every country. And then it was, looks, looked almost similar to this, was very flat. So what we decided was to filter by country and then just put results, uh, just put values for the United States. But then we still got the same thing, which makes us wonder, is it simply that we didn't have enough people 
to get an accurate enough um, idea of what you get paid depending on the years of experience you've worked? Or is it is the problem that from one state to another, there are so many differences in what people get paid that we couldn't get a more accurate picture? Because um, one would think normally that with the years As you of get more experience, you get paid more. Yeah, you oh, have man. a slightly steep steep uh, graph foot. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, okay. that's why we need more people to feel this, so that we get a better idea of what's happening here. Because I'm assuming in practice, that's what should happen. The more experience you have, the better pay you sure get. Yeah. Is that what you've witnessed in your case, in your countries? And then finally, we have here here, a graph where we are trying to see what people get paid depending on the degree they have. Now, what we can see here is that with the associate's degree, the bachelor's degree, the high school diploma, and the master's, there doesn't seem to be a huge difference moving from one level to the other but then interestingly here we removed the person who had a phd now as you mean i put that back in so the reason i removed that was because it was just one person but also because an outlier of this so the person that the doctor makes two hundred and fifty thousand a year the others make a lot less but it's between about 50,000 and I would say 60, 65,000, 70, somewhere in that range. Yeah. So, oh, this, it, it could probably have to do it. We don't really know what the doctor is involved in. Yeah, so true. That, that skews the data. Maybe he's, oh. maybe he's working in industry. Or mm -hmm. So, if you know doctors in the field, Please also ask them to fill the form so we get a better idea of what doctors get paid around the world or even in the US to start because this person was in the United States. So is there anything here that you thought surprised you? Anything, any calculation you think we could have done that you might be interested in? The link to this Excel Sheets, not Excel, Google, Google Sheets. The link to this Google Sheets is going to be in the description. You can click on that. Go and look at the go and look at the data. It's going to be locked, but you can save a copy in your drive and then do whatever you want with that. And also, if there's anything else you think we should do with the data, comment section. Tell us what we could do with it. Last words. This 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 is quite interesting. It's mm -hmm. a part of uh, med medical laboratory science. I quite like yeah. research, talking with people getting some qualitative data, just getting an idea so that if someone wants to get into the field, they have a clear idea, okay, if I am to work in Nigeria, okay, I know what to expect. Yeah. I know what my return on investment is, not mm -hmm. that someone is sugarcoating what you're meant to get and when you finally finish your studies and you are meant to work, you are collecting peanuts and you are, yep. you are surprised. <laughs> so yep. at least, yeah, this, this should give valuable information to people who are about to step into to the step field. into the field yeah and we are actually going to have other videos of the same kind where we're going to be using data that's already found on the net to try and for different countries try and go and then see what's happening especially in the us and also in nigeria if you'd be interested in that make sure to subscribe and if there's anything else you any questions you have concerning the field you know you think we may be able to answer also write those in the comment section. This was just a preliminary summary. The link to the form is in the, is in the description. If you have not submitted your data, please do. It's anonymous. You don't need to submit your email. You don't need to submit your name. We don't need to know any of that. What we just need to know is essentially your country, what currency you get paid in, and how much you get paid per year. Per year, remember it's per year. If you put the value per hour, you may have to remove um, the value because we won't be able to use it. We don't know how many hours you work. We don't know whether you get any bonuses. We just want your gross salary. It's not net, so just gross salary yearly.
that's what we're interested in see you next time